Good morning, folks. Can you imagine being a veteran observer and taking yesterday off, missing the X-Class flare in the afternoon, the enormous solar micronova news in the morning show? We're starting today at our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun with a major item of note being the X-Class solar flare and CME. The satellites are now fully updated, stereo here with Earth off to the right, and SOHO, the coronagraph showing not only the full halo eruption, but the particle static, which is the high-energy protons hitting the satellite. The ones accelerated to near relativistic speeds, and which have been pounding our polar region the last several hours since the X-Class flare. Hopefully that wanes back today. And yesterday afternoon, we saw NASA's Enlil Spiral predict a zero hundred hour impact UTC on Halloween. That's evening time in the USA, but NOAA's here forecasts a slightly earlier impact, tomorrow, mid to late day. That's a fast CME, and their G3, level 3 storm at KP7, is not a bad forecast, matches ours from last night. We can see we've had some more solar flares following the X-Class blast, but those were actually from the northern sunspot group. They did not produce major CMEs and were not aimed at Earth. If more erupts our way today, it could be a significant issue, but if it's just this one lowest level X-Class event, we can stow the larger fears for later in the sunspot cycle. Meanwhile, always good to know scientists are studying these events to try to learn more about them. The big September 2017 event was in the journals a good bit this week, and NASA's new Pathfinder experiment is aiming to nail down key processes that determine whether a flare releases that high-energy proton burst with it or not. Up next, kind of a spookyish sight here before Halloween, C.W. Leonis, a carbon star with shrouds of space clouds that tossed off of itself in glorious micronova fashion. Time lapse from Hubble here. And folks, while I blew up the Juno team spot a bit yesterday morning, turns out they had a whole lot more in store in their media day. It's not just the layers of the atmosphere we saw yesterday morning, but the working of the big storms on Jupiter especially at the polar region, where they now can definitively say those giant cyclones up there at the poles really don't move. They just sit there, and they oscillate only enough to bump into each other and then settle back. It suggests a deep connection of the storms, just like exists on Earth with a total vertical column in the major low-pressure cells. It's the global electric circuit. Lastly, on the article front, the Extreme Geomagnetic Event Special Edition at MDPI Geosciences got its third edition this week. Nice look at the excursion and reversal processes, and reminding us of the inter-excursion anomalies as well. We are marching towards the next one as we speak. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, if you missed yesterday morning's news, it's got one of the greatest revelations in our community's history. We'll have eyes on the sun today and the solar wind tomorrow night. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.